Welcome to another re-review guys where I take a figure that I have reviewed previously but filming techniques and just the overall presentation of the video back then doesn't really match up to the standard of today so I have gone back and uh, taken a few figures that I had reviewed in that kind of less than desirable you know, style take them and re-review them again for you today great lengths to make sure the lighting for Robocop is really nice because I want him to just look as good as possible and as you can see the lights just bouncing off him you've got a nice kind of warm glow coming from above and then two bright LEDs coming in from the left and the right bouncing off his armor just an amazing piece um, I actually did a top 10 or maybe a top 15 or maybe even top 20 uh, favorite figures in the collection video a few years ago and he actually came out number one and rightly so. I mean, I'm not saying that would be the case today because, you know, things have changed, more figures have come along. Uh, so it might be interesting to kind of do another top 10 or a top 15 uh, figure video in the near future. But he did win one of them. And Robocop is an amazing movie and it holds up so well today. It's just a classic. I love it. Um, it's also one of the first films I remember to really traumatize me as a kid. I saw it at a friend's house when I wasn't supposed to see it back in the 80s and I was about nine years old and Murphy's death really, I just never seen anything like that before and I remember just being kind of sick to my stomach but I kept watching the movie and loved every minute of it but certainly that scene I wasn't quite prepared to see that at that age and you know in the 80s kids weren't quite as you know desensitized as they are now with the internet, not that all kids are desensitized now but I'm sure you know the kids of today at nine years old have seen more than I did at nine years old in 1988 or 89, wherever it was. But an absolutely classic figure right here. They also did a battle damage version, which wasn't die cast, but just as impressive. And um, they also did a Murphy in his you know, police uniform. So it would have been cool to get some bad guys from the film, but that wasn't meant to be. You never know, maybe one day. They have been made by, I think, other companies, and there's certainly some custom figures out there of Clarence Bodica and his gang. But anyway, let's get stuck into this re-review on an absolute classic piece by Hot Toys. Hope you enjoy it, guys. Let's get started. First things I'd recommend you do if you get this figure is to replace the groin grabber with a waist grabber as I have done here and it's actually pretty cool because it's 10 times more stabilizing for the figure because his feet slide around on this uh, surface here quite a lot so I found the groin grabber I used it for like the first two years and had so many close calls with him toppling over and I know I'm kind of famous in my reviews for having the figure fall over at one point, but this is one review where he's not going anywhere because the waist grab is holding him locked in place. And as you can see, it actually blends in quite nicely to his midsection there. You know, I mean, you can see it, but you might even be able to go to other lengths to make it even more concealable but or more subtle. But I like it, and it just makes sure that he's not going to fall over or topple over or slide anywhere. So I would definitely recommend, even if you have to jump on uh, eBay and just get a waist grabber, a black one, and just uh, replace the groin grabber. Not the whole base, because 
It is a nice design, however, it is that surface that scratches so easily. So uh, I've never been too keen on these. But anyway, just a warning. Replace that groin grabber with a waist grabber. I gave you some really cool accessories with Robocop. You have a total of four different mouth plates, three here, and the one that's on him right now. You get a interchangeable chest plate with the battle damage from, you know, the scene in the movie where it's kind of sad, really. Poor old Robocop has a hard time in the film, but he comes out on top in the end. And the battle damaged helmet there from Edge 209. And this actually has, which we'll get a better look at during the review. You can actually see, oh, there it is. Where is it? Oh, yeah. Somewhere in there, there is Murphy's eye. I believe it's that one. But the, um, the data spike, is that what you call it? For uh, accessing the computer database at the police station, checking all the uh, criminals and how he found out, uh, found out about his own murder. What a film, man. It really is a layered, deep, you know, it's... Yeah, you can call Robocop a lot of things, you know? It's funny, it's scary, it's tense, it's action-packed, it's sad. Um, yeah, genuinely Robocop has the capacity to give me that lump in my throat at times. <laughs> you know, the beautiful score, uh, the performance. I love how seriously everyone takes it, you know? Peter Weller, all the training he went through to move uh, a certain way, and then they made the suit for him, and he went through months of training, I think it was with... Uh, a ballet teacher and a dance teacher and he learnt to move a certain way and then he tried on the suit first for the first time and he couldn't do any of it so he had to completely rethink the whole thing but every little movement in the movie is fantastic and um, it reminds me of the early Iron Man movies uh, where they really concentrated on every little movement of Iron Man you could hear the mechanism like you know and in Robocop the first one every little movement he gets that little kind of judder when he moves his head to the left or right, he doesn't just stop dead, it kind of goes... I love that. Uh, little details like that, and the way he walks, and the sound effects of his footsteps. Uh, wow. I just want to stop filming right now and go watch Robocop. <laughs> Robocop 2 weren't too bad. I wish Hot Toys had have done a Robocop 2. Uh, more blue-coloured Robo, because I always love that blue look from Robocop 2. Anyway. Just very, very awesome piece. Something I should definitely mention is with his hands that have the movable fingers, you can totally move these uh, any way you want. So they're amazing. I love these. Uh, but getting the gun, the classic Robocop gun, to stay in one of these hands, uh, you can get him to hold it, but as soon as you uh, even go near the thing, it's going to fall out and you have to do it all over again. So as you already know, if you've been uh, with me on the channel for a few years, you know that I actually glued this gun into the hand. Because I always want him holding this gun. Um, and if I decide to change it, I can just pull this hand off. Just think of it as um, an accessory hand that already has the gun molded into it, so you don't have to worry about it falling out all the time. So that's, what I, that's the way I think of it. And I know I'd never sell Robocop, so I don't have to worry about, oh, you've devalued him. It's not an issue with Robocop. He's a keeper. Um, but if I don't want to have the gun... Uh, then I can just switch out the hand for a fist instead. And also, um, 
this opens up and there's a spare gun. One gun is plastic and one gun is die cast. I believe that's the plastic one. The die cast one is nestled in here safely. So I'm going to go ahead and try and open this up for you now. I can't remember how you do it, but I'll, I'll give it a go and we'll be back. So I managed to get it open and just feeling this now, yes, that is very definitely the die cast one. Wow, the weight of this totally die cast, one six scale replica of Robocop's gun. I mean, that in itself, just that is a really badass thing. It's really heavy. That is Robo's gun. What is this? It's a, oh, I don't know. I'd have to watch the special features again. I'm sure they showed you how they, you know, designed this and made it. I guess they built it around a real existing gun. Uh, something like that, but I'm just so glad that they give you a die cast one. I mean, listen to that. That's heavy as hell. Uh, and the plastic one just makes sense to have that in his hand because obviously it's a hell of a lot lighter. But um, let me just see. I guess there's a little bit of a difference. The plastic one does seem to be painted with a bit more detail here and there. Or maybe not. Maybe it's just the way the light's hitting it right now. Either way, you've got a plastic one and a die cast one. And that makes me a very happy man. Pop that back in there again. Push it in. And then we bring this over. Uh, and this clips together. Like so. Done. Fixed. Finito. Gun is secure. And he is awesome. Prepared for battle. Property of OCP. Oh, what does that say? OCP 001. That's just uh, something I'm reading on his thigh there. Okay, so what's die cast and what's plastic? Uh, starting at the feet, I'm a little bit unsure. I'm gonna say plastic because they're not as cold to the touch as this part always is. It's like with the um, the chrome plated sideshow endo skull. It's it's always cold, no matter what temperature it is in here. That's always cold to the touch, and this is always cold to the touch here because it's die cast. But the feet, they feel really firm, but they don't feel cold. Just feels like room temperature, whatever, you know. But this is definitely die cast. This is definitely plastic. This is plastic. Uh, that feels oh, maybe die cast. Very, very firm feeling. This is most certainly die cast. All of this, that is definitely very firm, very cold to the touch. This is all plastic, plastic. And this is all plastic too. And same goes for plastic, plastic. As well as the die cast and plastic sections, you've got two rubber little bits in the center of the arm here where the elbow would be. And when you bend the arm, uh, I wouldn't recommend probably leaving him like that for too long. I have seen a picture on Facebook some time ago where the um, that rubber 
material. Let me just get up in there and you can see it. Yeah, that rubbery kind of material, if you're not careful, that could start to crack. Absolutely, it could. Uh, I don't really tend to bend it that much and leaving him... Uh, if I am going to have him, you know, posed up with the gun pointed, then I'll do it with more or less a straight arm so that I don't have to uh, worry so much about that. I mean, even that just looks awesome right there. He's about to... He's about to mess you up. Oh, man, just look at that thing. So good. The head's got really good posability. Uh, the neck movement's good. You can look up and down. Let me just grab him here. Look from side to side. You can actually turn his head all the way around if you wanted to. You can even get a little bit of a head tilt going on, just a little bit. Enough. A little bit of a curious Robocop there. But yeah, you can look up. You can look uh, down. You could always manipulate that more by... There's actually like this kind of uh, section here that lifts apart. If you press it together, actually it might not because of uh, where I've got the waist grabber right now, but right here, if you push together, that closes and it opens up so that you can get more movement in his torso and you can get quite a lot. You can, uh, it, it sounds scary, but trust me, he's pretty tough. And as you'll see throughout this video with the photography that I've done over the years and the rotating showcase video where he's on the rotating base, he's got great posability and he always looks awesome. It's very hard to make this figure look naff. It's uh, just quite a challenge to make him look bad because he's so awesome. Great posability. Absolutely fantastic. Alright, so I've removed the clean chest plate and the clean helmet on top. So that's what that looks like. There is a speaker because this guy has a bit of a cheesy gimmick where he can, uh, well, he has voice samples from the movie, you know, Dead or Alive, you're coming with me. Um, come quietly or there will be trouble and all that stuff. I've never bothered to use it. I've never had, I've never heard my figure once uh, do the vocal samples. Uh, I just, I'm not interested high-end collectible piece like this I just see that as a bit of a gimmick and I don't know if it really affected his overall price but I would certainly choose you know not to have it if it does affect the price I just don't need my Hot Toys figure to speak it's all good uh, this was the remote control for it you know you got your on off switch and the O in Robocop or one of the O's uh, was the on off switch but I just use it as a nameplate. Works fine. So, let's get this battle damage section on here. I'll need both hands just to properly click that into place, but you can see how easy that was. And then you just pop that on there, and there's Murphy's eye. Get up in there. Look at that. Crazy detail. Just like in that moment in the movie, where he's fighting at 209, you get a close-up. Again, another scene where you feel bad for Robo. But that's the uh, battle damage version, already done. Let's get a close-up look. Really great work here. The bullet holes and the, the dripping oil. Really, really well done. Look at that. Very, very, very... And look, the dents as well. You've got scratches, melting, bullet holes, dents. Look at all his uh, dripping fluids. More uh, bullet holes, indentations where they haven't gone quite through. Another little scuff. Let's just turn this bit here, get a look inside. You see all those cables and tubes and pipes? Amazing. And amazing detail on the Battle Damage Helmet. All the bullet indentations there. And again, Murphy's eye. Very, very well done. So I think I will display him on the shelf in the Battle Damage look for a change because he's always looking clean when I have him on the shelf. So I'm going to rock him like this and find a cool pose for him. But you saw how easy it was to interchange those sections. Really, really simple to do. Still be careful. It's not an indestructible figure, but very simple to get along with. Very satisfying piece, this. Lots of fun. Now, as well as the extending waist to allow for more articulation there, these arms actually go in and out quite far as well to allow you to get way more movement. You can see, see that? 
really good range of movement there. And I think that will even, if you wiggle it enough, it'll completely come out, but it's very easy to just pop back in again. And you push it close to the body, you can get it pretty seamless. I don't think it was that seamless in the film. I think uh, what you're looking at about there is just about right. But it's nice that you can get, you know, they went to great lengths to allow for pretty decent articulation with Robocop here, and it really is effective. Um, just a joy to pose this guy, and he always looks good. Like I said before, very difficult to make this look lame. It always looks awesome. Incredible job by Hot Toys, really. Definitely need to get the battle damage version at some point in time. Not too fussed about Murphy, um, because that figure will always remind me of that horrible scene in the film. I mean, it's a great scene, obviously. I mean, technically, it's incredible what they did, but... You know, those old school 80s techniques with the blood bags under the suits, you know, no CGI blood. It was all practical. It was really happening. Oh, man. I mean, it must have been crazy just to witness that being filmed, um, you know. Anyway, I'm going back to the dark place again. Let's head back to the light. you guys and just say this is an absolutely awesome piece i'd easily give this a 9.5 out of 10 it's almost perfect it is incredible it wasn't the first time hot toys have made a robocop figure on 1/6 scale this was the second attempt but they just stepped up their game so much by the time they brought this version out absolutely incredible and as you've seen during this review with the photography i did some time ago it's very easy to make this look like the real thing. Once you put some backgrounds behind it and light it right, it's basically like you've gone back in time and you were on set when they were making the Robocop movie and you got to take pictures of Peter Weller in the suit. That's why I love photography so much with these things. You get to go back and do a photo session with your childhood kind of heroes and the films that you grew up loving. So honestly, just can't rate this piece enough. We'll see where he comes up in a possible top 10 or top 15 or maybe even a top 20 figure video that I'll do on the channel soon. Like I said, he did win one of those once before some time ago, but we'll see where he comes up now since some of the new figures have come along into the collection. But I hope you've enjoyed this review and let me know in the comments section what you think of this piece. Keep an eye on the channel because like I said, I'm still going to do a re-review on the Terminator 1 Arnie over there. And now that I think about it, I'm not too sure if I've even reviewed the MMS-117 from T2 there. So he might get a review soon. And then there is the re-review that needs to be done on the Arkham City Batman there too. So, yep, I love this piece. Can't stress it enough and I kind of just want to keep filming it. Every angle looks insane. Any one of these angles right here could just be a picture on Facebook and I'm sure people would like it. It's just such a such a great figure to take pictures of and to film and the lighting just bounces off you know it just bounces off the armor so well you know anyway i'm gushing <laughs> and rightly so i love this piece and i love the film all right guys thanks for watching more coming real soon waiting for that one fourth scale hot toys joker to get released and it's coming as soon as it does and then that batman up there will have his nemesis so plenty of videos on the way plus more michael myers uh, stuff heading to the channel really soon too Got some exciting uh, Michael Myers videos on the way for you. So, subscribe, hit the bell icon uh, so you get notifications of all the videos. Follow me on Facebook. I'm doing the spiel. <laughs> you got to say it at the end of every video, blah, blah, blah. Check me out on Instagram, dnight333. Plenty of pictures and videos going up on uh, Instagram all the time. Pretty active on there. Uh, check me out on Patreon if you want to help the channel keep tooting along. Appreciate all you guys out there. Big love. All right, guys, thanks for watching. More coming soon. Take it easy. Bye-bye. <laughs>